Hey everybody, it's Jack Owen from DSI. We're gonna go over some gear, guitars, pickups, amps, processors, all that crap. Let's start with some Blackheart guitars. Out of, well, it was South Dakota, now it's uh, Virginia. So I've been with them for about four years. First one I got from them, it's an RA2. Neck through, mahogany body. Rosewood. Um, I think it was green, but he painted it for me. He painted it black. I still got the green dots. Um, I started with this because I've switched over to rail hammer pickups. Just something I saw online and I contacted uh, Joe Naylor. Totally cool guy. I said this is a great idea and he sent me a set to check out. So, awesome. He's got uh, obviously rails and then pull pieces for the high strings. Passive pickup with high output, uh, great clarity. Uh, you can tell if you play like a major chord, you can just hear every note ringing out. I was with Blackheart for a while and he wanted to do a signature, so I set a single cutaway. Uh, two humbuckers, it came with EMGs, but I, like I said, I would probably switch it out to rail hammer. Obviously a Floyd Rose for what we're doing. Um, toggle for you know standard toggle volume tone no switching right now it's cool to have but you don't really need it for DSI this one has to be redone with the rail hammers and I usually just do the pots and the output jack and the switch and everything so it's a little crackly right now so I'm sticking with the RA2 right now because it's totally redone and ready to go that's where we're at on Geeters I'm using Ernie Ball, uh, 10 to 42. I have a set. Well, I have a seven-string set as an emergency backup, so that's 10 to 56. Oh, it works out. I gotta pick up some more. Let's go pick. Of course, the industry standard in tune. I always play the. Uh, I don't always dig these up. The M3s with the sharp point. So when I called in tune, they were like, we got these. So I just did a did various designs with them. That one says Dia Jack just for fun. I've had like Jackie the Jew, I'm not Jewish, I don't know why, just a nickname. <laughs> or, you know, I think that's like a under a millimeter, that is a millimeter. It varies depending on you know what you're what you're doing, what you're playing. If you want to play harder or get a little more nuance to your plan. Let's go to processors. Line six. Um, I was using Digitech stuff forever and it just falls apart eventually. And uh, they had a new artist rep that just basically wouldn't replace it, fix it or whatever. So I just found that in a, a music store somewhere on tour. And it's pretty good, easily programmable stuff. Everybody's familiar with line six. Line six insane. If you want heavy, that's what the sound would be applied. And I really just have a heavily heavily gated rhythm, an open rhythm, and then a boost lead with I think unified and delay and then a uh, boost lead channel. With, I think just delay. Yeah. Anything to be a little different. Uh, cables. New trick. No endorsement. Just, you know, pick them up wherever. Cables, no big deal. All right, power. I've had a couple of these crate heads for about. Somebody asked me last night. It must be like 10 or 13 years. 10, 12. About 12. Uh, it was something crate made before they dissolved. A 350 watt solid state head. There are effects built in, which are pretty cool, but I'm really just using it for power. Just run the line six into the back, into the effects loop. Since it's 350 watts. Cool. Nothing special on it, it's just output jacks. Uh, they actually don't sound terrible uh, straight in. So sometimes I do that, or usually just use the line six, because there's no gate. Uh, let's go cabinets. Where's the logo? Crimson cabinet. Uh, 
Crimson Cabinets was started by Chad Pettit, who started Blackheart. So he hooked me up with a couple of these with the Ox Blood mesh front and 75 watt selections. Nothing special, but they are solid. He's a big fan of meter cabinets, so it's kind of a, a take on that. Um, I don't think they're stereo split, just the mono in. And there you have it, I think.